we're going to talk a little bit about minors. We often get questions, what are minors, how do I take them, how do I declare them, and things like that. So let's chat a little bit about them. Well, first of all, what is a minor? A minor is a concentration, six courses, in a particular area of focus, which is different to whatever your major happens to be. So in our particular case, obviously, our major is Creative Industries, because you're doing a BA in Creative Industries. But you can minor in any one of the other almost 60 options available at Ryerson. The only thing you cannot minor in as a creative industry student is the business essentials minor because it's too similar to your major. Other than that, you can pick any one of the other subjects. So how do you know what to take when it comes to a minor? If you go to the minor requirements in the undergraduate course calendar, it will show you for each subject exactly what you need to take. There's always six courses, and they're very specific six courses. Often cases there are required courses, in some cases just electives. You'll select those six courses, and you'll take them as you progress through your degree. In some cases, your minor courses are also on the liberal studies table. So it means that by taking a liberal studies course that you would have to have taken anyway, you can check off one of your minor requirements. The same thing can be said often with the open elective tables. Sometimes courses that you would have had to have taken to complete your minor are also on the open elective table. So you can, so you can kind of kill two birds with one stone, checking off your minor requirements while also satisfying your degree requirements. Now, not all minors work this way. In some cases, you are going to need to take courses above and beyond what you would have to have done for your undergraduate degree. And this could cause extra time and money. So when it comes time to select a minor, what I would suggest doing is print off the requirements for that particular minor. Have a look at each of the courses that would be required and look to see are any of those courses on the lower level liberal studies table, the upper level liberal studies table, the open elective table, or even elsewhere in your degree. If they are, then you know that just through some strategic planning, you can check off some of your minor requirements while completing your degree requirements. That's going to give you an idea of, are you going to need to take courses above and beyond? Also, when it comes to selecting a minor, I would say pick something that is going to complement your degree. What I mean by that is go with subjects like uh, marketing, entrepreneurship, or potentially one of the minors that are offered by our sister schools in EPCAM. So maybe you're doing fashion as your module, um, your module A, and you're doing storytelling and media as your module B, but you want to have a journalism minor. You could look at doing that so that you have sort of three areas of focus. Other than that, if you're already completing courses for your lower level liberal studies and your upper level liberal studies that are part of a minor and it only require you to take one or two more courses, that's another reason why you might want to pursue that subject. As I said previously, a minor is six courses. They're often very specific courses and there are no substitutions in a minor you have to follow the requirements exactly. When it comes to declaring your minor, you don't declare it when you start it. You declare it at point of graduation. What I mean by that is when you go online to graduate, you will be selecting that you're asking to be audited for a BA in Creative Industries, because that's your degree, but you'll also have a drop-down menu asking you if you've completed a minor. You'll select your minor, whatever the subject happens to be, and then they'll audit you to see if you've met the requirements for your minor, as well as the requirements for your degree. If you've met the requirements for your degree but not your minor, you will still be eligible to graduate. You will not be permitted to remain to complete your minor requirements. You have to complete them both at the same time. Equally, you cannot return to complete a minor. Once you graduate, that degree is locked in, your GPA and your minor requirements. Like I said previously, there are almost 60 minors to select from. You can choose more than one minor. And if you ever have any questions about minors, email us at CRI Advising, or you can always go into the undergraduate course calendar where they have all of the minors listed, as well as all of the policies and procedures surrounding them. I hope this has helped a little bit. And if you have any questions, just let us know.